Hello everyone and welcome to Machine Learning and Robotics Tutorials. In this robotics tutorial we explain how to install and use the Python library for simulating and visualizing motion of robots. This library is used for developing and testing reinforcement learning algorithms. This library belongs to the class of so-called gym or gymnasium type of libraries for training reinforcement learning algorithms. Namely, as the word gym or gymnasium indicate, these libraries are capable of simulating the motion of robots and for applying reinforcement learning actions and observing rewards for every action. That is, instead of using a real robot, you're going to use this virtual Python environment and this, this simulation environment to simulate and train reinforcement learning algorithms. So let's explain what's happening over here. These two videos represent top views of a camera that observes the action and motion of two robots. You can see that these are two collaborative robots and they need to perform some tasks. So let's explain these tasks. On the left figure, the right arm needs to first pick up the red cube lying on the table and then place it inside of the gripper of the second arm. On the right figure, that is over here, the left and right arm need to pick up the socket and peg respectively and then insert in mid-air so the peg touches the pins inside of the socket. That is, this is the insertion task. And if I play these videos, you can see the simulated random motions of robots with much higher speed. That is, I simply increase the speed over here since you have a lot of random tasks. So what you're seeing over here are random tasks performed by robots during the training of reinforcement learning algorithms. And you can see, for example, one of the robots just hit one of the objects and the object flew away from the table. Before I start with explanations on how to install and use this library, I first need to put everything that I will explain in this video tutorial in the context of my previous video tutorials. Namely, maybe one or two years ago, I spent a significant amount of time explaining the background behind reinforcement learning algorithms and how to simulate reinforcement learning algorithms in Python. And I created maybe five to 10 video tutorials. Here you can see one of the tutorials. Namely, if I play this tutorial, this tutorial shows how to use open gym or gymnasium library to simulate the motion of a cart on a pendulum or a pendulum on a cart system, which you can see over here. This is a simple environment for testing reinforcement learning algorithms. Then I use this algorithm over here in this video tutorial to explain how to implement a queue learning algorithm. That is how to implement a queue learning algorithm. And after you implement the queue learning algorithm, you will be able to stabilize this inverted pendulum. Now, you can use this, these video tutorials together with this environment to learn how to implement reinforcement learning algorithms for robotic systems. That is, everything will be the same. And the library that I will explain in this video tutorial, whose code is given over here, is almost the same as the library for simulating the inverted pendulum system. That is, you can use this code, modify it a little bit, and put it in the, in the code that I developed for testing and implementing reinforcement learning algorithms. Okay, so here's the GitHub page of the library. It is under the Hugging Face repository, and you can see who created this library over here. You can see some background information, some installation instructions that I will modify, slightly you can see a simple demo that I will also modify over here and expand a little bit and over here you can see the description so let's start immediately with installation okay let's start with the prerequisite first of all you will need to have anaconda or mini conda installed on your Linux Ubuntu system namely to install anaconda on Linux Ubuntu system you can follow this tutorial I created and I will provide a link to this tutorial in the description below. The installation of Anaconda is straightforward. Okay, once you install Anaconda, let's verify that you have everything that you need on your system. So open a terminal 
And over here in the terminal, you need to type this conda activate. And if you see this base environment, this means that Anaconda or Conda or Mini Conda are properly installed on your system. Let me now get out of this environment and let's continue with installation. Then verify your Linux Ubuntu system. You can do it like this. You can see that I'm running on Ubuntu 24.04. Now, also verify that you also have the GCC compiler. Here it is. It should come with Linux Ubuntu. Next, let's make sure that we have Git installed on our system such that we can download the remote files and repositories. You can install Git by executing this command, enter the password and continue. Next, make sure that you're in the home folder by typing this command and then in the home folder you need to clone this remote repository so type git clone and this address if you cannot find this address simply go on google and search for jim aloha github page that is here is the github page then over here copy this paste here and you just need to paste after git clone that's it and this will download the remote repository now if you type this command you should see over here a folder called Jim Aloha. So let's navigate to Jim Aloha and let's see all the files. The files over here are the exact copy of the files on the remote repository. Okay, so the next step is to create our Anaconda virtual environment and to install all the packages. To do that, you need to execute this command. So let's do that and this will create Anaconda virtual environment. Consequently, be patient. Good. You can see also that the environment is activated and now you can install all the dependencies, libraries and packages by simply executing this command. And you can see over here that a lot of stuff is being installed. You can see all these packages that are necessary to use gmaloha so let's type pip list to see all the things you can see how many things we need to run gmaloha good the next step is to write a test code however let's explain first several important things let's go over the description of this environment there are two tasks in this environment as explained at the beginning of this video tutorial the first task is to transfer a cube from one arm to another and the second task to insert two things that is to insert for example bolt in a hole or something similar let's talk about action space action spaces are very important here it's written that the action space consists of continuous values for each arm and gripper resulting in a 14 dimensional vector good so we have six values for each arm joint positions and we give absolute values. So what are these things? These are basically the values or pulse width modulation signals that you're sending to the servo motors in every arm or to a stepper motor or whatever the motor is in a particular robot. And then we have one value for each gripper's position normalized between zero and one that is you can open and close the gripper so you have for every robot arm seven control variables you have control for motors and one to open or close the gripper and then you have observation space which is also very important observations are provided as a dictionary with the following keys q position and q velocities these are the position and velocity data for arms and grippers namely every robot should have an encoder or some feedback mechanism or a sensor giving you information about angle of rotation and velocity and that's what's given over here then we have images and we have camera feeds from different angles so what you can get you can get camera from the top left right bottom or you can probably even define your own camera and then you can get environment state additional environment state information such as position of the peg and sockets and here is one very important thing i noticed this current implementation of this library is actually not giving you all these things as a feedback information it's only giving you actually the top image and i looked into the environment.py file and i realized 
where the issue might be. The issue might be in this function format row observation, namely this function only extracts the top view and disregards other things. Namely, instead of this, you can probably use row observation or something like that. The row observation or a similar function should give you everything that you need. And this is something, or yes, so this environment.step function, evident action, will give you row observation. And this data structure, row observation, actually contains all these things. However, the observation itself doesn't contain. However, here for illustration, it's just enough for you to test this library and later on you can improve it or you can fix if there are some issues. One, I'm not 100% sure about this. However, this is what I noticed by just running the library several times. Okay, and then you have rewards. You have different type of rewards for transfer cube task and insertion task. Of course, the maximum reward will be, get, will be given for points for a successful transfer without touching the table. And for insertion task, four points for a successful insertion of the peg into the socket. And you get incrementally po every point an additional one point for every successful completed task. Okay, and then you have some additional arguments, etc. Good. Now that we understand this library, let's write a test code. To write a test code, use your favorite Python editor. In my case, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to start it like this. If you don't have a Visual Studio Code on Linux Ubuntu, don't worry, I created a separate video tutorial. You can find that video tutorial on my YouTube channel, or I'm going to also post it in the description below. So let's create a new file, file, new file, and let's call the file as test1.py. Oops, I made an error, I don't want this file, new file, test1.py. And let's save it over here, create file, and over here I'm going to paste the file I've wrote, namely how I wrote this file, I went to this GitHub page, and then I modified their file such that it's kind of more reasonable, at least in my opinion. Okay, so let's see what's happening over here. First of all, you need to import the necessary libraries. Then over here, you create a gym environment. And those of you who understand gymnasium or gym type of library, you will not have any issues understanding this. Here you have two options. You can do two tasks. You can specify the insertion task or you can do the transfer cube task. So let's start with this task over here. Then what you need to do, as always, after you define the environment, you need to reset the environment. And over here, you're defining this list to collect all the frames. So what are the frames? The frames are actually camera snapshots from the top view. That is, after every task is completed or after every motion is completed, or every action is performed, we are going to take with the camera a single, single snapshot and we are going to store it inside of the frames. Later on, as you can see over here, we are going to use the frames to create a movie. And at the end of this execution of this code, you will have a nice movie demonstrating the robot action. Okay, so what do we do over here in this for loop? We basically sample random actions, that is, we sample position for the first motor, second motor, third motor, fifth motor, sixth motor of the first robot. We do the same thing. That is, we apply random motions to all the joints and all the motors of every robot as well as to the gripper of both motors. And this action space should be basically 14. Then what do we do over here? We apply this to our environment. This function step returns the observation. And in this particular implementation, it's just going to be the top camera view. Then we return reward. Read this web page about what the rewards are again. Then we return this Boolean terminated or not and truncated yes or no. And we return additional info. Then what do we do? We render the image based on the environment and then we append the frames one after another and here is my modification here after every 50 actions i'm going to reset my environment since i want to return everything to initial state and this can be for example an episode over here that you're simulating and then over here if terminated or truncated you're simply resetting the environment that is you're returning everything to the initial state 
And finally, after the random actions are completed, you close the environment and you save all the frames as a video and the video is called example1.mp4. So let's execute this. To execute this, you need to select the Conda virtual environment and to do that, press and hold control shift P, then click on Python, select the environment, make sure that you select this environment, otherwise code will not run and let's run the code and let's see what will happen. Now, if you wait for a while, over here you will see the file called example one. Here it is. Double click on example one, play it, and you can see a random simulation of robot motion. And you can see after 50 actions, we simply reset everything such that we have fresh start. Now you can also debug this code. Let me show you how to do that. So for example, let's add over here breakpoint somewhere, let's say over here. Let's add the breakpoint. Then let's start the debugger. Let's start here and we're currently over here. And then you can go here and then you can inspect what is what. So let's see what is observation. Let me now do this such that you can see. So let's see what is observation. Uh -huh. Observation obviously is a dictionary and you can type, let's see what are the keys, oops, keys, and we can type something like this, right? To get the top one. And this is basically the image and it's in RGB form. You can, for example, use OpenCV to visualize this image. Let's see what is the reward, probably zero. Yeah, it's zero since you didn't do anything useful. It's not terminated, truncated, and that's it. Okay, this was a brief introduction to this amazing library. As I mentioned previously, you can use this library and a simple code that I wrote to write your own reinforcement learning algorithms. However, you will probably also do a few additional things, maybe develop a computer vision system for detecting the position of the cube or some other objects. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video tutorial.